Hey, what's up guys? My name is Carl Froy, CEO and designated broker for Kenneth James Realty, and I'm super excited to nerd out with you today. We're gonna to talk about the HOA addendum and why you should be doing it uh, the way that I talk about. Not that it's the exact way that your brokerage wants you to do it, it's the way that we've done it here, uh, and it's served us pretty dang well. We haven't had too many issues with this, if you followed my advice. So the cost for admission for this course is smash that like button, and um, obviously be sure to subscribe. It's the only thing I ask and I'll give you some very, very valuable information, not only in this tutorial, but in the many tutorials to come. And so hopefully I can add a lot of value to you and your business. We'll talk about lead gen and uh, this kind of stuff. So anyways, getting right into it. All right, so let's take a look at one of my office listings here real quick for you. Uh, looks like a very nice house in Mesa. It's in Las Sendas, okay. There's the HOA contact information, HOA fee. Uh, look and see if there's any other fee. Looks like there is a transfer fee here, 375. Just kind of cruising through here, see what I'm looking at. Okay, so now I'm gonna get into the actual HOA addendum. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste this just very, very quickly. Uh, and with the magic of editing, it'll be done here in just a second here. All right, so now we got all that information in there. Let's kind of break this thing down line by line. And so the HOA for this property is last sentence HOA. Here's the phone number. Guys, on this one, there's no management company. I happen to know that it's self-managed. I think it's like trailhead.org or something like that is the website on that. Um, but if you live in like a condo complex or if it's you know something like McCormick Ranch where they have a management company actually doing the managing for them, you would want to put that management company in there. It might be like AAM or uh, Community Property Services or something like that where um, you know they have a, a contact information that is different than the actual HOA contact. So it's very important to put that in there. Here's what I would do because this is where a lot of people get tripped up. I would actually call the HOA and I would verify with an email all of the fees and transfer fees and capital improvement fees that are in there, that is where most of the issues come up with the HOA addendum. It's a relatively simple addendum, but keep in mind I have had agents in my firm write very large checks because they missed a capital improvement fee, which can be big. We've seen those things be $4,000 or even more than that, or maybe it's an HOA transfer fee that they missed. And a lot of agents, what they do is they go into the MLS and they'll look at another listing that is in that same community and they'll pull, they'll just randomly scrape that information out. They'll put it in an HOA addendum without verifying it first and that's where the trouble starts. Uh, even asking your homeowner, your seller, if you're on the selling side, isn't enough. And so if you're representing a buyer, you have to call. If you're representing a seller, you have to call and verify this stuff. Let me go through and say one more thing too. If you're representing a seller, as a seller's agent, you absolutely need to be putting this in the documents section. Let me show you where this is. Go to the documents section. Your HOA addendum should be in here 100% of the time. I, I don't want to, as a buyer's agent, just rely on what you put in the TMS. If you put the HOA addendum in there, I'm fairly confident that you've done your job as a listing agent to verify those fees. I'm always gonna put some kind of verbiage in there, you know, seller to pay any fees that weren't disclosed in the additional terms because you know, we have had many situations where the seller didn't know or the seller's agent didn't verify and there were additional fees. And then we get down to the day of closing. This happened recently. The day of closing, the escrow company had to call the buyer and the buyer had to bring in a check in order to get that deal closed because there was an undisclosed transfer fee. Whose fault is it? It's probably everybody's fault. But I don't want that to happen to you guys, so just you know, keep that in mind. Getting back into the computer here, let's just go through this line by line. If there's a regular HOA, this is where it is. If there's a master association like there is in uh, McCormick Ranch, McCormick Ranch is a very good example of this because they have the master association, which is, I think the dues are like 160 bucks a quarter, or maybe it's a year. And that covers all the facilities. And then you do have the smaller subdivisions inside that master plan community that have their own HOA. And so that's what you would do here. If you have another HOA or whatever it is, you would put that in here in, in 16 or 17. Transfer fees. Very self-explanatory, you know, if you've got an HOA transfer fee or a master association transfer fee. Capital improvement fee, here's where it gets a little bit sticky and a lot of agents just, they say, well, it's not, it's a community enhancement fee or it's something like that. Um, that's still a capital improvement fee and so let's go through that together. They can be called community reserve, asset preservation, capital reserve, working capital, community enhancement, future improvement fees, or payments. And so, you know, we see some big fees in here. Fortunately for Las Sendas, I don't think there's anything in here. I'm gonna put an NA, or actually I'm gonna put a zero. And then for Master Association, we put NA in here. Prepaid dues, keep in mind that the buyer always pays prepaid dues. I think there's a big um, 
people get stuck on that, you know, and they're not prepared. Maybe the buyer's agent hasn't prepared the buyer, you know, to be bringing in two months worth of HOAs, which is pretty much the, the standard here in Arizona, at least. Now, unfortunately for Los Santos, doesn't require any prepaids. Member Na Master Association put NA in there. Disclosure fees always get paid by the seller. And here it doesn't list any disclosure fees. I will call Las Sendas and I will verify that. Um, but for now, let's assume they're zero. Master Association, again, is NA. If there's any other fees, you would put them in here. And so we've seen crazy fees that get charged by the HOAs. Uh, maybe it's a rush fee. You know, that'd be a very common fee. So let's put $100 in here just for example. Rush fee. You know, and then who's going to pay that? Um, and so let's look at the next page here. Um, so let me actually step back for two seconds. When you're on a listing appointment, as the seller's agent, you should probably be giving your seller this document to sign initially. I always do it with the spuds. So like I'll do the HOA denim, the spuds, lead based paint and stuff like that at the listing appointment and have them at least fill it out as best as they can and sign it. I'll verify all that information. If we need to make adjustments, I can do that later. And so, you know, this is the document up to this point where you want to load that into the MLS under the document section. Additional obligation, it talks about if the homeowner association has less than 50 units or more than 50 units, you know, uh, what the buyer is allowed to do um, to dispute or disapprove of any of those items. And here's the information required by law. Nobody actually reads this stuff. And so you guys, you have to understand, these need to be um, provided to the buyer every single time. And then page three of three is really the buyer acknowledgement of the terms and conditions. And this is where the negotiation happens. I see a lot of listing agents go ahead and just you know check buyer and buyer. It's not the proper way to do it. You actually want to negotiate this. So as a listing agent, when you upload this document into the MLS, this page three should be blank other than the name of your seller, right? So um, go ahead and put buyer. Let's put Bob in there. Uh, premise address. I don't know why I pre-filled that. That's kind of strange. We'll say one, two, three Main Street. You know, and then you're just confirming all this stuff. So today's date's May 26th. And here's where the negotiation happens. If I'm on buyer side. Bam, bam. I'm checking seller and seller. If I'm on the other side, I want to at least negotiate that a little bit. Maybe it's you check the other box and you say 50-50. You know, you can do that. You can have, you know, 25-75. 25% by buyer. And then you can have the, you know, the other paid by the seller. And you can, you can always negotiate that. It's a free negotiation. Any other fees, here's where you would actually, you know, say, you know, rush fee to be paid by the seller. You know, uh, you can do something like that. Any additional terms and conditions, this is where I always enter in a little verbiage about, you know, the disclosure from the seller. All right, so I put a term in there. It says, you know, if there are any fees that haven't been disclosed by the seller, those fees are to be paid by the seller if I'm representing the buyer. You know I'm going to stick that right in there. Um, if you're representing the seller, usually the, the document would come from the buyer's agent and you wouldn't have an opportunity to really negotiate that or maybe you could put that in an addendum or something like that. Uh, it's a little tricky to negotiate those things. That's why I always at least put the initial HOA disclosure into the document section of the MLS. That makes you look very, very professional. And we all appreciate it as buyer's agents when you guys do that. So if you have any other questions, please reach out to me. I appreciate you tuning in. Can't wait to see you on the next one. Enjoy your day. Have a prosperous day. We'll see you in a ticket.